Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we'll be taking a look at the transformed cosine function. So in your notebook, please put down today's subtitle, Transformed Cosine Function. The transformed cosine function has the following format. Y equals A cosine of B times X minus H plus K. The transformed cosine function has a lot of elements packed into it. So let's go over each element slowly. The first element that you'll want to think about when trying to graph a cosine function is in fact its variation. In a cosine function, the variation is dependent only on the variable a. If a is positive, that means that your cycle will be in a dip. However, if the value of A is negative, then that will produce a cycle that will be in a hump. The next element that you will want to consider when drawing the cosine function is in fact its amplitude. Just a reminder that the amplitude is defined as a half distance from the highest to the lowest point on the graph. And that can be calculated by simply taking the absolute value of A. The next element they can finally think about is the actual start of the cycle. The start of the cycle is dependent on whether the cycle is a dip or a hump. If the cycle turns out to be a dip, then the coordinate for the start of the cycle will be represented by H and K plus the amplitude. If, however, your cycle turns out to be a hump, then the start coordinate of the cycle will be represented by h and k subtract the amplitude. The next element that you can consider is the period. Just a reminder that the period represents the length of one cycle. And that can be calculated with the formula 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b. And finally, the last element that we may consider is the maximum and minimum values of the graph. They are calculated with the following formulas. The maximum can be calculated with the formula k plus the amplitude. And the minimum can be calculated with the formula k subtract the amplitude. Let's take a look at an example to see how all these clues come together to produce a graph of a cosine function. For example, we will be drawing the following graph. The graph of y equals 2 times cosine of a quarter times x minus pi plus 1. First, let's clearly identify all of our variables. The variable a is equal to 2. The variable b is equal to a quarter. The variable h is equal to pi. And the variable k is equal to 1. The first clue that you'd like to obtain is the variation of the graph. The variation in a cosine function is given by the sign of the variable a. In this example, a is positive. That means that the cycle that you'll be drawing will be in the shape of a dip. The next clue that you would like to obtain is the amplitude. The amplitude is given by the formula absolute value of A. And in this example, the amplitude will correspond to 2. With the variation and the amplitude together, we can finally figure out where the start of the cycle is. With the variation, we know that the cycle will be in the form of a dip. And if it's in the form of a dip, it means that the start of the cycle will occur at the coordinate h and k plus the amplitude. In our example, that will produce a start point located at pi and 3. The next element that you'll probably want to identify is the period. The period is given with the formula 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b. In our example, that will correspond to 
2 pi divided by the absolute value of 1 over 4, which will give you a period of 8 pi. That means when we draw the cycle, it will be 8 pi radians long. And finally, the maximum and minimum values can be calculated with the following formulas. The maximum corresponds to k plus the amplitude, and in this example, that will equal to 3. And the minimum is calculated with the formula k subtract the amplitude, and in this example, that will produce a minimum of minus 1. After determining all these clues, we are now ready to draw the graph. In order to accommodate all these clues, you will need a grid that's about this size. Go ahead, pause the video, and prepare your grid now. Before we actually draw the graph, let's discuss how to calibrate the x and the y axes. The y axis is the easy one to calibrate. That can be revealed to you simply by looking at the maximum and the minimum values. The max and the min values will help you calibrate the y-axis very easily. The x-axis is a little bit trickier because it's in radians. However, perhaps one of the easier ways to calibrate the x-axis is to simply start with your h-value and just jump by your h-value. The next thing you'll want to draw on your graph is the box which will contain the cycle. Drawing this box is very easy. The height of the box will be contained between the maximum and the minimum value. The length of the box will start at the value of h and will end at the end of the cycle, which can be calculated by h plus the period. In our example, the box that will be produced is the following. Please indicate clearly on your diagram how the box starts and how the box ends. Further cutting up the box in half vertically and horizontally will help us in our graphing. With all this preparation, we are now finally ready to draw the wave. To start, put down the coordinate of the start of the cycle. In this example, it was located at pi and 3. Because this graph was in the shape of a dip, it means that the cycle will end with the same y coordinate. So therefore, another point will be located at 9 pi and 3. Now also, because of the fact that it is in the shape of a dip, it means that it will reach its lowest point in the middle of the curve. Therefore, we will have a point at the coordinate 5 pi and negative 1. Using your semi-artistic skills, do your best to connect these three points with a nice graceful curve. And that's all there is, ladies and gentlemen, to dealing with a transformed cosine function.